Welcome to our first, I think it's the first, movie review of the year. Technically a show review because it's the Creep Show Holiday Special. Oh, the holidays are over, you say. I don't care. We're going to do it anyways. And I also have said many times that from here on out, Halloween's going to be kind of a year-round thing on this channel. A celebration of monsters, if you will. If you were around on my channel last October, you probably saw some of the Creep Show reviews I already did based on the new updated series. Which is great. It still feels like the old Creep Show, but modernized with new stories. It's still got that Creep Show personality, and in the tail end of 2020, they also made a holiday special, and I can confidently tell you that it is awesome in every sense of the word and it is completely over the top. Creepshow takes us into the world of Robert Weston, a man that gets stared down by Santas wherever he goes. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too, pal. Robert's world is a world of confusion. Robert has had some serious, unusual issues lately in his life, and he finds a support group that might be able to help him out that's located in the basement of a local church. About three months prior, he started finding all sorts of weird objects in his poop every time he went to go take a dump. Small pieces of fabric, little pieces of white stone that kind of look like bones. Understandably, that was cause for concern, and he finally decides, maybe I should go see a doctor and get this checked out. But the medical office requested that he bring stool samples so he brings a sample of his feces in a small Tupperware container that he has to carry around until the doctor sees him. He's just walking around with a turd. Once again, we have the classic creep show exaggerated neon lighting. You always need to have that lighting at some point in the episode for it to truly dive all the way into the creep show. The doctor, although this man is anal evacuating things like coins and zippers, doesn't think any of this is a big deal. <coughs> I, I don't. I don't think there's anything serious. All right. I, I, I'll prescribe a mild sleep aid to help you with your uh, late night snacking. I just want to go through your place and, uh, you know, get rid of anything that looks tasty. <laughs> Maybe he's just sleepwalking and eating weird things in the middle of the night. Maybe someone's playing a prank on him and putting stuff at his food. And at the same time, people in the city have been disappearing and bodies have been found mutilated. And Robert comes to the conclusion that he might in fact be the Naperville Ripper. ...custody of her daughter after locking her in a closet for a week without food or water. For JBN Channel 4 News, I'm Ann Poole. Oh, thanks, Anne. In other news, Christmas is right around the corner, and Santa's army redemption is being spotted all over town. Make sure you're not naughty, boys and girls. This will... But he has no memories of killing anyone, and after some internet research, because everything on the internet you read must be true, he discovers this SA group that may be able to help him figure out what's going on. The group is invitation only, he's got the wrong password to get in, so he's not allowed to join. He offers them cookies and donuts, still doesn't work, so he pulls the I think I'm a killer card. I'm a Naperville Ripper. And go to the cops. I can't. I need help. And you may be the only ones who know what's going on. He finally gets into the meeting, and this entire segment where they're all just kind of sitting around getting to know each other is just pure, well-written comedy. The topic of discussion is just completely outlandish, but they all talk about it with the utmost seriousness. You see, the SA in the group title stands for Shapeshifters Anonymous. They all think they're humans that can transform back and forth into animals. Everyone here genuinely believes they turn into animals at the sight of a full moon, not necessarily a werewolf like a lot of other horror stories embellish it. Irina, the chapter president, is a school teacher in her normal human life, but she claims to change into a were cheetah, and her clothing even represents this. So Robert is starting to think that these people might be a little crazy, because he feels guilty about possibly killing people during these blackouts he's experiencing. And Irina tells him that it's okay, because all the people he's killed were bad people. She spins it as making the world a better, safer place, kind of like how the Punisher would look at it. They kill and eat evil people because evil tends to taste better. It's all very ridiculous, but it gets even more ridiculous as the rest of them describe their transformations. Scott is an ex-marine, and he believes he's a were-tortoise, a turtle. A were-tortoise? Mm -hmm. Like, if you turn into a turtle? Yeah. With the scales and the shell that is your home? That's the one. Do you shrink down or are you full size? Full size. Do you eat people? No. 
I eat lettuce. Is it evil lettuce? I'm gonna put your sarcasm down as you being on the edge of a nervous breakdown. So I'll ignore that one. Andy says he's a were boar, a giant man-sized pig, basically. Yeah, I turn into a pig. You mean a bigger pig, right, Andy? God, you are so fucking hot, Irina. Get it. And my favorite has to be Phyllis. She's a furry. She likes to put on a hippo outfit on her free time, and she's convinced that her inner animal is a hippo. Really? What makes her so funny is that she's not even really one of them. They just let her in because they feel bad for her. She just wants to be part of this group. You are not even a real therianthrope. I am in my heart. You know, Phyllis, when the full moon rises, you don't turn into a hippo. You turn into an idiot who puts on a hippo outfit and you skip around like some demented children's show host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep talking. And I'm gonna turn you into the other, other white meat. Okay, hammer. all right, whatever. Hunger, hunger. Yeah, okay, hippo. bacon, okay, bacon. Okay, everybody, please. And finally, we have Ryan, the mysterious quiet man that's been sitting in the corner the whole time. Ryan doesn't talk. Ryan doesn't say a word. Ryan's at every meeting, and he just kind of sits there. Nobody really knows anything about him. Now, the animal Robert is, he believes he's a werewolf. I um, just always assumed I was a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? They all start laughing at him because everybody wants to be a werewolf. Werewolves always have all the horror movies and stories. And Robert goes on a quest to find out what he really is. Shapeshifters Anonymous happen to have the tools necessary to uncover his deepest secrets. They rub catnip on him to see if he has a reaction and nothing. So they know he's not any kind of feline creature. But when he touches the wolf's bane... Jesus, what the hell was that? Are you okay? Oh, I'll be damned. What? That was Wolfsbane. You're a lycanthrope. Oh. This proves he is in fact a werewolf, and the rest of the group is super excited. They want to know how he became one, were his parents werewolves, was he cursed by a gypsy, and then he suddenly remembers. An old lady that lives near him was mad at him for making too much noise, and she placed a curse on him. A gypsy curse. I'm sorry, I... Oh, excuse me. Okay, excuse me, I said. I'm sorry. You are loud. Jesus. You will keep it down in there. Okay, mouth. I will keep it down. You know, there is a thing called earplugs, which you can purchase at any pharmacy, which I'm sure you know all of them. Thank you. And the only way for him to cure himself of the curse is to simply return to the gypsy that cursed him and have her reverse the spell. But there is a problem. That might be a little hard. Oh, fuck. I ate her. Oh. oh. I ate her dog. Oh, my oh, God. God. What? And I peed all over her edges. Uh, why would you do I that? I think I was marking I've... my territory. I don't know. Oh. That makes zero sense. I've, I've done that. I've done that. With all this backstory out of the way, now the Shapeshifters Anonymous meeting actually starts, and they all take the oath of the Shapeshifters. They agree to use their powers for the good of man and Therianthrope kind to help others of their species in need, and they'll try not to devour nice people. And I know what you're probably thinking, because it's the same thing I was thinking the entire time I was watching this. How the hell is this a holiday special? None of this has anything to do with Christmas. So far, if you thought the premise was absurd, we're about to turn the ridiculous meter all the way up to ultra, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I promise to avoid Kris Kringle, the dreaded Santa Claus, and his many evil helpers. I, um, I think I didn't under... What does that mean? Santa Claus, the third Theropod. Santa Claus, the mythical jolly character loved by millions. He kills shapeshifters. You're kidding. At this point, Robert is just as confused as the audience. Nobody knows how shapeshifters first originated, but Scott the Turtle Man has the answers and starts describing how entire books in the Bible were taken out throughout history. And this church happens to be hiding one of those books, the Lost Book of Bob. And this ancient lost piece of history is in English, of course. And if you remember my previous Creepshow reviews, you'll recognize Bob as a throwback to the little monster that grew from a finger. As the story goes in the book of Bob, God had a disciple called Bob and gifted him with the power of lycanthropy, the ability to turn into a werewolf. He was meant to use his powers to devour evil, but Bob became too prideful and God punished him. And now we get to the true origin story of Santa Claus. Forget everything you know from childhood. Strap into your sleighs because I promise this is one of the most insane backstories you will ever hear. There's no turning back. One of Bob's enemies was a man named 
Christopher, and God granted him an impenetrable suit of armor, a red suit, and commanded him to destroy all Therian Thropes. He was also blessed with reindeer that were given the power to fly, and enough strength to pull Christopher's sleigh through the sky, his warship. Eventually, Bob and Christopher came to blows in a titanic battle, and Bob won. Since Christopher lost the battle, he felt betrayed by God and turned to the other side for help, the side of Lucifer. He gave the devil a visit and was granted with a demonic weapon shaped like the talons of an eagle and forged in the fires of hell. Weapons he called Satan's Claws, like Santa Claus, get it? But Christopher couldn't accomplish his mission alone. He needed helpers, and he recruited an army, an army that finally tracked down Shapeshifters Anonymous. Oh, there's gotta be hundreds of them. Fuck me. Those are his little red helpers? So you're telling me Chris Kringle and his magical red suit and Satan's claw, which I guess over time has turned into Santa Claus, is coming here to kill Therianthropes with a bunch of shopping mall Santas? Santa Claus has come to town. Now it makes sense why every time a Santa was around, he would glare angrily at Robert. They knew what he was. What ensues here is absolute chaos. The Santas barge in, in comic book form. They trigger a bunch of explosions, traps designed to defend against their wrath. They're screaming, they're on fire, the shapeshifters are panicking, and we get an explanation further revealing the origins of Santa Claus and why we see him as a benevolent figure that leaves presents behind. Kringle's killed tens of thousands of fairy crooks over the centuries, leaving many children orphans. He started to feel some remorse, so after slaughtering their parents, he began to leave toys behind. Kringle gave this to me oh. when I was seven years old, right Oops. after murdering my parents. Yikes. He also gave me a train set. Robert is still having a hard time believing that all the Santas in the world are actually shapeshifter hunters, even though all the other insanity he learned about it is also part of his new worldview. And then he remembered he just saw a Santa earlier in the day, an experience he just discounted as running into a crazy dude. There's a killer on the loose in Naperville. Only comes out when the moon is full. Naughty boys, they get what they deserve. Their heads severed from their unholy bodies. And it's absolutely hilarious as the Santas are trying to barge in, they're chanting ho, ho, ho every time they bash the door. But the shapeshifters have their own defenses ready inside. They've got this huge collection of guns just ready to unload on the Kevlar wearing Santas. And yes, they actually specify that the red Santa suits are Kevlar, so they have to aim for the face. And when the Santas arrive with their Christmas cheer, the shooting gallery begins. I think I've rewatched this scene like 85 times, just this one scene. I understand Creepshow has been filled with all sorts of craziness from the 80s all the way to now, but this holiday special is just another level. However, it's still not over. After fighting off an army of mall Santas, they still need to face off against the big man himself, the main final boss, Kris Kringle, the real Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Oh! And it's kind of scary when Kris Kringle arrives. The security monitors start messing up, the noise is in the background, there's some build up here. And the mysterious Ryan finally stands up and has the solution to all their problems. He happens to have a metamorphosis potion. It allows them to turn into their animal states while retaining their human intellect. The rest of the plot before this doesn't even hint that any of this is possible. It's just more completely out of the blue plot points that are more than welcome. If they all drink the potions and transform, they can attack Santa Claus together and defeat him. It words they just can't describe what happens next. I have no words. Watch. Fucking stealth. 
think. I, I can even talk. What? There's still some frosting inside. Look amazing. We finally get a look at their animal form. Scott is my absolute favorite one, looking like a terrifyingly realistic Ninja Turtle. And since Phyllis is just a furry with no actual animal powers, she doesn't transform into anything. She's just Phyllis. But she does have a gun. Well, shit. And I don't even have my damn hippo suit here. Well, at least give me the damn gun. Before the big bad Santa comes in, he sends more of his army, and the battle against Man Beast and Mall Santas continue. After Santa's army is defeated, the original Kris Kringle appears, and he's terrifying. He's a freakishly tall monster, armed with razor claws described in the Book of Bob, with incredibly powerful armor and super strength. <sighs> I especially love how Santa has a list, like in the actual Santa lore, but instead of a list of naughty children, he keeps a list of shapeshifters that he needs to hunt down, and Phyllis isn't on the list, much to her own disappointment. Who is this naughty Phyllis, Lawanda, Marisha, Talina, Allenby. Am I on your stupid ass list too? I do not believe so. No? Are you sure about that fat man? I'll be happy to check it twice. Are you saying I'm not one of them? Because I am one of them. I am one of them in my heart. The humor in this special is on point from beginning to end, and in the end, Ryan reveals his true self, his animal side. The Bob from the Book of Bob, the original monster that defeated Santa Claus in his monster form, is a huge animatronic beast. <laughs> Can his original nemesis defeat him in an epic battle of monsters? Nope, there's no final battle. Phyllis the Powerless does him in with a sneak attack, and I love the explanation as to why Bob didn't simply do this thousands of years ago. Am I on your list now, motherfucker? You killed Chris Kringle. Damn easy, too. Why did you do that 5,000 years ago? I didn't know that was possible. That was... Wow. If this was a serious, dramatic story, I'd say that was an awful, anticlimactic ending. But with how crazy and unpredictable everything else has been up to this point, it somehow makes perfect sense, and I completely accept it. After Santa's defeat, they now all have the power to fully control their transformations fully, and Ryan offers to turn Phyllis into a werewolf. But her dream is to become a hippopotamus, something that Bob can't do, it's beyond his power. But there is a chance. You see, if you sit on Santa's lap and you wish hard enough, your deepest, most heartfelt wish may come true due to some of Kris Kringle's Christmas magic. At first, the wish doesn't seem to work since she's not a hippo, but it's because instead of choosing to wish for a transformation, she takes the opportunity to wish for American rapper Lil Yachty. It's quite possibly the stupidest thing they could have possibly done, and I swear I'm not making it up. Uh Holy fuck, Phyllis, that's little Yachty. Gonna take you home, make love to you all night, girl. But first, sit the bank and get you the hundred million dollars. Okay. <laughs> you know, I killed some of these motherfuckers. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> 
And that's the Creepshow Holiday Special. I really don't know what else to say about this. I was laughing my ass off throughout the entire thing, and I heavily enjoyed myself. I had no idea what the hell was going on half the time, and I was just waiting to see what happened next. I'm pretty sure it's going to become some of my regular viewing from Halloween season through Christmas season. Leave me your comments down below with your thoughts. What did you think about this insanity? And I wish you an extremely late Merry Christmas. Or an extremely early one from a certain point of view. If you'd like to support my work, I invite you to become a patron. There's multiple levels of support available. Or for an option right here on YouTube, you can become a channel member and gain access to exclusive badges and emojis for live streams and exclusive polls. Every dollar helps keep the wheels turning, and I'd like to thank my current patrons and channel members for their continued support. If you enjoyed this review, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and make sure you follow me on social media so you never miss a thing.